the launch of another broken Bethesda game which seems to handily be clapping the cheeks of modern gaming systems, it got me thinking about RAM again. How little is too little for 2023? At what point does Starfield just start crapping out because there isn't enough RAM available to it? Well, let's find out today. Oh, and other games as well. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet's monolithic new Dark Base Pro 901. A case with so many awesome features, if I were to list them all, we'd be here for hours. Not only could it easily accommodate this obscene dual epic system, but with its wireless charging, huge amounts of front IO, great hard drive support for a modern case, removable radiator mounts with built-in fan hubs, invertible motherboard tray, and I really could go on for ages. Ages. But if you're in the market for a new mothership of a case, check out the Dark Base Pro 901 with the link in the video description. For the test platform, I wanted to use a CPU that had an iGPU in it for a terrible idea later on, but I also wanted it to support DDR4 for its lower capacity dual channel kits. So I decided to use the Corsair build kit PC that Anna built in a video a while ago, which has an i7-13700K in it. Although I needed to reconfigure Anna's handiwork a little, with the radiator mounted in the top, accessing the RAM becomes an exercise in heart palpitations, and that's like the only thing I wanted to interact with in this video. So I moved the radiator to the front, ripped out all of the fans and replaced some of them with some fancy new Corsair IQ Link fans. And because those fans are magnetized, I could mount both of them to the radiator using just two screws, which is really exciting. I also had to put a power supply back in the system, so I went with this Be Quiet Pure Power 12M that Be Quiet sent over a while ago. So now that the RAM was nice and easily accessible, I dropped in a 32 gig kit and the RTX 4070 Ti that was included in this Corsair build kit. Oh, something terrible's happening. So now that I've rebooted the system, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the display's kind of flickering. That's weird. I then spent a not inconsiderable amount of time trying to diagnose the flicker, from unplugging all of the IQ stuff, to changing out the 4070 Ti for a 4090, I even swapped out the monitor. Wait, it's still flickering, what? It turns out the reason it was flickering was because I didn't delete the AMD drivers off the system before putting the Nvidia GPU in and they were just fighting to the death. So when I cleared off all the drivers and reinstalled them, aside from some phantom flickers, the problem was solved. Okay, so now that we're in Cladonia, which is like a closed off indoor city bit, uh, we've got about 11 gigs of memory allocation going on here. And that's with 32 gigs available. So, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to try different bits of the game. So now we're on the surface of Mars, and allocation hasn't really jumped up a whole lot, has it? Even wandering around New Atlantis, which is a huge city area at 4K, was just seeing about 13 gigs of memory allocation. So I've been playing for a while now, and it's kind of crept up to about 15 gigs of memory allocation, but it's never gone above that. So I'm gonna go and benchmark in the flight simulator thing now, then we'll try some other games and rip some RAM out to see what performance impact that has. Oh, and for those of you worried about the imminent fusion reaction on the CPU, the Corsair AIO's stock fan profiles were just on drugs, and once I fixed them, it fixed the problem. Now, I know Cyberpunk's been out for a while, but I still wanted to check it out. Uh, now, at 1440p high with medium ray tracing, we're still just getting about 10-ish gigs of memory allocation. It's not nearly as much as I thought. Whoa, RE4 uses more video memory than RAM. That actually sucks, because it's not like you can spend 50 bucks on an extra 16 gigs of video memory. So this is with all of the settings cranked, even with ray tracing on, we're getting well over 200 frames per second at 1440p. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to have very little RAM in the system before terrible things start happening. But you know, that's part of what we're here to find out. Oh, even The Last of Us seems to be quite conservative. But this is the first game where we've gotten over 16 gigs of memory allocation. 
and we've got over 10 gigs on the GPU. Now this is at 1440p with like all of the settings cranked. And yeah, this is what it looks like when you've got 32 gigs of RAM in here. We've got a nice smooth frame time graph. It feels all good and the things loaded in nice and quickly. Oh wait, I just remembered a game that may use a lot more RAM. Okay, at this point, I'm convinced MSI Afterburner is lying to us. The new Streets expansion is just allocating about 16 gigs of RAM? I don't know, I thought Escape from Tarkov used way more RAM than that. Okay, well, that settles it. Let's rip some RAM out and see what happens to the performance. Now, the first step down we're doing is dropping this 16 gig kit in there. It's basically the same RAM, just less of it. Ugh. I love how regularly characters get stuck talking away from you. So many cutscenes are just you looking at the back of someone's head. Now, aside from the back of head action, cutting the RAM amount in half made no difference to the performance in Starfield. Despite the RAM allocation in some areas being lower than with the previous configuration, it didn't seem to impact the performance. Oh, the same thing goes for Cyberpunk. Despite it showing lower memory allocation with the 16 gigs of RAM, the performance is very much within the margin of error. Now again, with Resident Evil, we're seeing slightly lower memory allocation, but this time around, aside from the 1% lows, that's pretty much within the margin of error. It seems to be performing identically. We've got the same kind of smooth frame time graph, and yeah, it seems happy with it. I think there may be areas later in the game where you need a bit more RAM, but other than that, it seems to be perfectly happy with 16 gigs. Oh no, I forgot where I did the test last time and I, I don't know the new streets well enough to find my way back there easily. Oh, and I've got a Timmy PMC, so I can't run very far or fast. I am so glad this is an offline raid. And despite looking around for ages, I just couldn't find the same spot. But I did notice that the frame rate was very consistent. And when I tested in a different spot, I still got the same result. So I guess that works. Now for the eight gig part of the test, I didn't want to use single channel like some kind of animal. So I went out and bought this eight gig kit. Now it is a different brand, but we're gonna run it at the same speed and cast latency. So that shouldn't matter. So we have that happening, which we're very happy with. The only sad part is we lost our RGB. Wait, what? Why is it still performing the same? I, this doesn't make any sense. I was expecting carnage and all we got was slightly lower 1% lows. <laughs> Why is it not performing worse? I then thought maybe it had something to do with rebar, but when I turned that off, I still got the same result. So no, apparently you just don't need RAM. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I am starting to get a little confused here. We've just got eight gigs of RAM in here and apparently Cyberpunk doesn't mind. It's perfectly happy with it. Okay, it seems like Resident Evil 4 also doesn't notice that there's just 8 gigs of RAM in the system. Maybe this shouldn't be weird to me, but this is just no problem. Yay, we finally found a game that's protesting the RAM shortage, although it's just not working as supposed to running terribly. But then something terrible happened. Oh, oh no, I just accidentally loaded into a real raid. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um... How do I leave? I don't know this map. Wow, it's so much more stuttery now that it's like on a server. <laughs> it's, it feels so much worse now. Although despite not being equipped for a full raid, I managed to take a couple of players down with me, but then because of a complete lack of directional audio, I got gunned down from behind. Okay, well now with that having ended terribly, I'm now in an offline round. And as you can see, it's performing way better. Battle State really needs to deal with their servers. But putting that aside, the flicker is back. I don't know what's going on with this system. It seems to be on heavy drugs, but I don't know what the problem is with it. And then putting that aside, it's still performing the same. Why? I think the reason I was expecting it to perform a lot worse is because when I upgrade pre-builds to 16 gigs, it performs way better. But usually that's also going from single to dual channel. Let's try something. Let's plug in a single 8 gig stick. Hey, that's finally made some difference. It's still not the knee to the groin I was expecting, but it's worse. 
Now, let's see what happens with a single 4 gig stick. This was clearly a step too far, because best case scenario, the games just crashed right after they launched. I then went down a stupid rabbit hole of trying to get worse performance out of the 8 gig kit. First, I launched every program on the PC in the background, which made a bit of a difference to the 1% lows, but clearly Windows is just too good at prioritizing where the resources need to go. I then dropped Starfield down to low priority and task manager, which made much less of a difference. The next thing I wanted to try was to allocate more RAM to the iGPU, potentially tricking the games into running with less RAM available to them than they thought. But after trying every platform I had available in the office, not a single one of them would let me dedicate RAM to the iGPU with a discrete graphics card in the system. And the final thing I tried was dropping a completely different graphics card in the system. Now the last thing I'm going to try is a different graphics card. Ignore the way the AMD graphics card's getting power, that's all Nvidia stupid new arson connectors fault but i'm curious to see how this rx 6700 xt responds to having just eight gigs of ram oh no it also clearly doesn't care starfield is just happy with eight gigs of ram as long as it's a kit and not a single stick Okay, so that didn't really go as expected. Uh, now, just a quick disclaimer before we go, I know that there are other games in the world and that some of them really like RAM. So if you play like City Skylines or Beam Drive or something like that, you will probably benefit from a lot of RAM. But apparently Starfield doesn't care. Which brings me to the end of the video. Bye.